Okay, setting up the Modio Unity plugin. This is a pretty quick and easy process. First thing we need to do is get the Unity package file, which we can get from the GitHub page, or you can get it directly from the Unity asset store. So go ahead and import all of that. It should only take a couple of seconds. And as soon as it's finished importing, if you do find any errors showing up in the console, you may want to check for any libraries that are already part of your project. For example, if you go to plugins, Mod.io and third party, you might already have the JSON.NET library installed in your project. So you can go ahead and delete that from the plugin if you need to. Uh, and the same, of course, for SharpZip. However, if you do still get any errors showing up after you've fixed those, it could be that you just need to restart Unity for it to recognize some of the new assembly definitions. Now, if you don't get any errors, you should get a new tools option show up at the top. So we're going to go ahead and click that and go to Mod.io and go to edit settings. This will generate a settings file where we can input the game ID and API key for our game. So if you have got a game set up already on the Mod.io site, you can input that here. I'm just going to use one uh, as an example here from the production server. If you set it up on the test server, make sure you change the URL to the test API. So if you click this button, it'll automatically swap to URL. This one, however, that I'm using is actually on production. So we're gonna use the production URL there. You can also click this button to find the ID and API key of your game. Uh, if you're logged in, of course, it'll open up a browser and show that to help you find it. So that's all there is to setting up the plugin. Now, we do need to make sure that we hit save because this is a scriptable object. And it's very important as well that we unselect this because there is a well-known issue in Unity 2019 up until 2022, where having a scriptable object selected when you're running the, the, the play, play mode in the editor, it can actually crash. So we obviously don't want anything to crash. So naturally, let's always unselect that when we're not using it. So everything should be set up now and we can test that by going to an example scene that we have in plugins, Mod.io, in UI, there should be an examples folder. And in there we have an example scene. If we open that up, we can hit play in here and it's gonna ask us to import Text Mesh Pro. There we go. So we'll do that, it takes just a second. And then we'll hit play again and we can see now the UI in the example scene is showing up and it's using the correct game, which is the one that I added to the config file. So now users can go ahead and browse around, find mods that they like, subscribe, etc., etc. Now in the next step, I'm gonna show you how to get this UI set up into your own scene and how to retrieve mods that users have installed. Now that we have the Mod.io plugin set up correctly, and we can see it working from the example scene, I'm gonna show you how to get that UI from the example scene into our own scene. So first step in the examples folder, there should be a Mod.io browser prefab. We can just drag that into the scene where we want the UI to be. And now I'm gonna just create a button uh, just for this example to show you how to open the UI as part of that prefab. So I created a script earlier called testing. Now this is just a blank script, as you can see. Uh, we're just going to create one very simple method in here. I'll just call it open for now. And all we need to do is get the Mod.io browser namespace, the browser class, and the open browser method. Now it's asking us for an action or a delegate if you'd rather, which we can provide and will get invoked when the browser is closed. So when the user's finished using the browser and they hit close, this is the method that'll be used. Now we can leave this as null and we'll do that just for this example. But if we did need some other logic, we could run that by just creating another method, of course, and placing it in here. And that'll get invoked whenever the browser's closed. But we don't actually need that for this example because we have a very, very simple button on the UI. Now that's all we need. We just need this one line to interact with our UI. And if I go back to our scene, we'll attach that script to our button. 
There we go, testing. And we'll add an on-click event and we'll add the script reference there. And we'll assign the open method that we just finished writing to that button. And now we should be finished. If we play our scene and click our button, you'll see that it'll open our UI. And of course we can close it again, open the UI again, no trouble. And you can see it's loading the exact same game that we set up earlier in config. So now the UI is completely set up. A user can happily go ahead and they can log in, they can subscribe, and anything that they subscribe to is gonna show up in their collection where it will automatically download and install the mods that they want. So now that we've got that set up, the last step is that we need a way in order to retrieve the mods that users have installed. So in the next step, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. And now that we have the UI set up correctly, I'm gonna show you how to get the installed mods that a user may have subscribed and downloaded from the UI. So now we're gonna open up the testing script that we made earlier. We're gonna make sure that we're using the mod.io namespace. Then we're gonna go ahead and create a new method, which I'll just call get mods. Now we're gonna get an array of mods. We're gonna use the mod.io unity class. This has all of the methods you need to interact with the mod.io plugin but we're only going to use get subscribed mods method for this example, which also outputs a result that we can use to check whether or not this succeeded. So we can do that with result.succeeded. It's always a good habit to make sure that things are working. We're also going to change this to be a bit more explicit. So you can see that we have a subscribed mod array here which we're going to now iterate over. So this isn't actually the installed mods, these are the subscribed mods. So we need to now iterate over each mod in this array and check which ones are installed. So we can do that with mod.status. We have an enum here, we can see what the current state of that mod is. So in this case, we can check if it's installed and if it's installed, that means it's ready to be implemented. So you'll likely want to get the directory now with mod.directory. So you now have access to an installed mod that the user wants to use in the game. You have the directory. You can go ahead and read those files and implement it however you like. However, for this example, we are just going to output a error. So it's nice and easy to see. We can go to mod.mod profile to get a few more details, such as the description, the name, the status, we're just going to use the name for now. We'll put that into the log and I'm going to comment this out because we're not using it, but this is very likely what you will want to be using. And there we have it. We've got our method now with everything we need. We're getting the subscribed mods, checking if it succeeded to get them. we we'll iterate over them, find the installed mods, and we're going to output the name of those mods. So now I'm going to go back to our scene and we'll test that out. first thing I'm going to do is create a new button and we're going to rename this to something else so we do not get it confused and we'll move it down so we can see it and I'm going to change the event method to get mods now if we go ahead and open up the scene I'll open the UI and you'll notice I've already gone ahead and logged in you can see I've subscribed to some mods here so if we go ahead and push our new button there we go, one, two, three, our mods show up straight away in the console. If I clear this and we open up our UI again, we might want to subscribe to a new mod. So we'll subscribe to this one, go back to our collection, we can see it here. Now, if I click our button again, we'll see it shows up here in the console. So there you have it. We've got our UI working in our own scene. Users can install any mod that they like and we can retrieve those and figure out which ones are installed and ready to be used. So that's all I have for you today. You're welcome to jump onto our public Discord and talk to myself or somebody else if you have more questions. And I will leave a link to the documentation for the plugin itself in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.